Hello, YouTube. Today, I want to talk to you about Draw.io and how you can use it in VS Code to do some pretty awesome stuff. So first, what is Draw.io? Well, Draw.io is a uh, program that you can use to draw inside of VS Code. You can do it outside of VS Code. There's a desktop app as well. But this is the general idea. You have a drawing app where you can diagram. OK. So this is VS Code, which we all know and love. And this is um, a extension right here that you can use to integrate Draw.io into VS Code. I'll put a link in the description. TLDR, this is awesome. And let me show you why. So one of the coolest parts about um, this specific extension is that there is this thing called CodeLink. And CodeLink lets you uh, basically link from your document into your code. You heard that right. You can link from your document in Draw.io into your code. Let's see how this works. So first of all, this is my uh, VS Code profile setup, whatever. I'm going to kind of make it a little bit easier to see. And I'll explain as I go what I'm doing. TLDR, this is the image to ants work that I've been doing. And the image to ants stuff is coming along. But it's taking a bit. It's taking a bit because it's complicated. And what's making it complicated is the amount of complexity, I guess. So maybe it's maybe it's complex. It's not complicated. I don't know. Anyway, the idea is that I'm working on stuff. It's getting deep and I need to kind of zoom out and abstract away. So there's a couple ways you can do this. And one is to kind of reframe what it is you're working on and set it up in your brain again so that you can go at it from a clean slate. And so for me, I didn't do this in the beginning because I thought, okay, well, all I need really is a mock-up. The mock-up will translate into code pretty easily. Like this shouldn't be overly difficult. Well. I don't know if that's necessarily true because what happened is I had to I'm going, I've been going down the rails on this and what I'm trying to do here, let me just show you. Uh, da, 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 da. Right. So what I'm working on is, let's see, where is the bounding box here? It's not even in here it is. So preview. Right. So this thing here is what I'm working on. This right here. That's what I'm trying to, to build here. And how do I move this? Can I? OK, there we go. This right here, this bounding box. And you would think, and you wouldn't be wrong, that the stuff to do this is not that hard. But then if you really think about it, you have to go kind of deep. You have to, first of all, build this all from scratch. Nothing exists to do this right now. So the first thing you have is you have your flat, you know, UI. Then you have a box over top. You need to be able to, re, you know, do stuff with it. So I made the document in Draw.io and I did it outside of VS Code, not knowing that this extension existed. And I'm really glad that I took this time to do this exercise because it helps me to see the right perspective for what I'm trying to accomplish in this way. So, right, so let's take a look at the kind of way that the extension works. So first of all, you can create a new document by just right clicking and choosing new file and call, you know, draw IO, whatever. Now you have an empty file and from here you can just double click. You can add text, you can add boxes, circles, whatever you like, which is nice things, right? 
stuff. You just click on it and you start typing and you can drag from these pointers to this here and you'd be like, stuff is inside of things, whatever. Cool. So that's how that works. I'm not gonna go into a tutorial about that, but I will show you that, you know, when I created this in my, um, in my initial attempt, I did it with a dark theme. You can change the theme of the extension to be dark, but um, I kind of like it this way. It's a little bit easier to see. And because the extension is not using the uh, online version of the program. So here you can see you want to use the bundled instance because then it can support plugins like Markdown and Mermaid. Anyway, uh, you can change the skin down here from extension settings. Okay, so anyway, let's get to the good meaty part of this video, which is going to be explaining how you can link your code or your diagram, I guess, to your code. So all you have to do is enable this little feature called code link and it's right down here in the status bar and it's called code link. And if you turn this on, it'll light up and the little thing will come on. You turn it off, it looks like this. On, it looks like that. Okay, so that's code link. Now, if you look at one of these nodes and you hover over it, you can see that there's information on this node. And this is the data part of draw IO. And it's just, you know, you can have whatever properties you want on your objects and things. And you can even see them exposed here. Uh, some of these are global properties, but if you go in here and you choose edit data, you can see that there are new properties such as the column number, line number, path, right? So if you look over to the right, you can see it's linked to my basic file in boundingbox.bas. So how, how does that work? So, well, first, if you double click, you saw how it lit up there, or maybe you didn't, it lit that up right there. Let me open it up again. So double clicking here, we'll keep it open. And now if I double click here, it will keep the other thing open. I'm gonna move it over here. I'm gonna stock it, okay? And I'm gonna turn on full screen over here to get rid of all the widgets, control shift H, right? So now if I double click, you see how it lit that up. I've already linked this in, in the work that I've done already. And each part of my code, goes to a section, or each part of my diagram goes to a section of my code. So I can really quickly fly around and see what the hell I'm doing and how it works, which is really, really cool. So how do you do this from the beginning? Let's do it again. Let's create a new basic file and we're gonna put it in my archive directory here, old works in progress. There's a temp.bas. I'm just gonna repurpose this and I'm gonna control uh, space and type QB. This is my QB, you know, boilerplate code. I've got my code here, here's my base file, okay? So I'm gonna save that. Now I'm going to go into my same folder, new file, and we're gonna call it temp.drawio. And here, I'm gonna dock it over onto the right again. And if you look at the code, we could set some bookmarks, like let's do, we'll say, okay, here's where our slash is defined, right? So you can double click, create what you want. I'll just make it a square. We'll say, this is the header. Uh, and then you can have, you know, uh, formatted text and stuff in here. You can have special, you know, formatting, whatever you want. And then the header is going to link to, and if you hover over, you can just click down or left or right and you can see it's how you could organize, organize, not organize, <laughs> organize your code, right? So that creates a island. And then if you click here and then you pick one, now it will create a link. So we're going to say console, right? And then inside a console, we're going to go to the right and we're going to create a new thing. And let's use a new shape. How about that? And it's going to be console.log. And then we're gonna create another shape over here. Clicking this, oops, sorry. Clicking this again. Oh, I guess I can't do that. All right, I'll just go down. Console.info and then console.dot 
worn. You get the general idea here, I think. So the workflow is really neat. So let's hide all this. We're gonna do Control Shift H to make it big, big. And inside my code, um, I, ha I can link through a couple different ways. So first, you have to make sure that code link is on, so turn that on. The second thing you wanna do is select the node that you wanna link, and then you're gonna navigate in your code and point to where it is. So we're gonna click header. We're gonna select all of our header here, and we're gonna hit Shift F3. And what you saw was it highlighted and it highlighted, and that means that it's gone through and created that link between things. Now, you can do this um, in multiple ways. So you can, like I said, you can select your entire console section here in F3, Shift F3, and now that's all linked. Uh, you can also click on an individual sub here like I want, select it, Shift F3, select it, Shift F3, select it, Shift F3, right? And now what you can do is you can fly around your code. So let's make the window so it's gonna scroll a bit. And let's go ahead and control shift H again. So we have this new uh, temp.draw.io. And now if I hit, if I double click console, it scrolls to the code and it, it shows us what the code is inside of here. So, so why is that so cool? Well, you get an overlay of the stuff that you're coding in, in a visual way. And you can make this look however you want. Is, these can be pictures, whatever you want. Another really cool thing about this plugin is you can choose, um, let's see. If I just insert text here, I can actually use Markdown and from here, I could be like, uh, you know, this is a thing with a header. Here is a sub header. Here's some bullets, another bullet, whatever. And if I hit apply um, from here, now I don't know if I've got the plugin enabled actually. Arrange, where's that at? Extras, I might, it might be only in the dark theme. I don't know if it's gonna work in the Atlas theme. Uh, but it should render Markdown there is really what should happen. Let's see if it is just linked to the theme. So we're gonna go here, click on extension settings, go down here and we're gonna choose dark. And what happens is it reinitializes it. So it looks like it's there, but for some reason it didn't work the way I had anticipated it would. That's okay. We're going to go back to Atlas. I prefer Atlas anyway. But anyway, there's some plugins you can install. And this did work at one point. I don't know why it's not now. It could be because maybe my file isn't saved. I don't know. But the neat thing is now if I close this and I close this and I go back and I just open my diagram here and I'm just in a preview mode. If I double click, it will take me to the code. And this symbiotic relationship exists right in the program. So if I go to edit data, you can see that it's using dot dot forward slash temp dot BAS. I don't know what the dot dot means. I would assume it should have been dot, but that's okay. It works and you can see that's how that is set up. Okay, so another thing you can do is you don't have to just link boxes. You can link edges. These are called edges. So if you, if you choose edit, select vertices, that's gonna be all of the different points in your diagram but you can also select edges, which are all the different arrows and paths. Uh, and you can choose select none. Anyway, like, let's say we want to choose, we're going to go here and we're going to create a new, I don't know what that is, but we want this to be taking some code in. So we're going to open up at this point, we're going to open up our file. We're going to actually move this to the right again. Okay. And then this is actually the wrong temp. We want it to be this temp. Okay, so now if I click on this edge, I can do the same thing. So maybe I want console error and then shift F3. And you saw the edge there. So now that's really neat because you can have text on edges as well, like error, right? So now when I double click this, 
sorry. When I double click it, um, and I'm not in design mode, I think, I'm not sure, uh, it will link to the thing in question. So let's go ahead and file, save, close, close. Let's try that again. So, does that work? Okay, maybe because I added it a text. Let's see, is the data on there? The data is on there, but I think there is a default that maybe it's too, maybe the, maybe the line is too thin and I can't click on it properly or it's just the behavior of it. Hmm. How do I, how do I? Edit link, that's not right, that's not what I want anyway. Okay, well anyway, you can do it and I've done it in my other diagram, so let me open that up. And that is the bottle bop 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 here, right. So if I double click on drag, well it did work a moment ago. I wonder why, hmm. Trust me, it did work. Um, or maybe, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. You need to lock it maybe? Yeah, you gotta lock it, okay. So that's good to know. So let's say I have everything, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna choose lock. So now I can double click and I can go to the edge. Okay, anyway, yeah, I wanted to share this because I thought it was awesome. And this was the initial uh, you know, way that I was working and, and I was doing it outside of VS Code, then I realized, wow, you can do this in VS Code. How cool is that? So yeah, I just wanted to share that. Um, you can get the extension from the marketplace. Just go here, extensions and type draw IO. You'll see a whole bunch of them. This is the official one uh, from this guy. Well, unofficial, but it's official in that it's the one this guy made. And then there are also some plugins, including Mermaid, which is really cool too. Uh, maybe I could show that. So if I choose Mermaid, you can just open up like a sequence diagram or flowchart here. If you right click, you can edit the data. Sorry, I wanna edit the style maybe. What is it? Edit style. No, I know there's a way that you can edit this. Here it is, double click it. Right, so here you could put in your mermaid stuff. So what the hell is mermaid? Well, mermaid is a markup language, kind of like graph viz. Um, and there's a bunch of different, uh, da -da -da. actually I already had it in there, mermaid JS. Would be fine. Um, so if we go to tutorials, we just pick something. Let's pick the flowchart. You'll see that there's source here. I don't know if this is all supported, but let's try this. Uh, markdown format. I don't know. Let's try it. So if we go back here and we paste this in. Ah, so it did work, but the markdown did not work. So let's keep going. Let's find a more complicated example. Um, here's a good one. Let's copy this one and just bop it in there. So now you can really quickly do uh, diagram as code as well. Now, I don't know. I think that you could only link this one diagram. I don't think you can decompose this. Can you? I don't think you can. What I'm getting at is I don't think you can decompose it into its discrete pieces. I think this is one object. So let's see if it works though. So let's say I want that to go to, oh, I don't know. How about this thing and I've selected it already. So now if I hit, let me move this over here so we can see together. So I'm gonna go here, select, shift F3. Did that work? It did, it did. Now if I lock it and I double click it, yep, you can see it's there. So the double click is gonna open it, but that's okay. So another way that you can work with this stuff, I'm gonna delete that, I don't want it. Oh, I gotta unlock it. Another way you can work with this stuff is using symbol links. So what we've been doing so far is source code links. So if you look at the extension and what it provides, 
like let me find something that you haven't got yet how about move i haven't done a thing with that if you hit control shift p and you type draw io you're going to get all of the things that you can do and you can see link code with the selected node link workspace symbol with selected node uh and so on so I, I'm going to show you how to do a symbol with the selected node. I don't have a workspace enabled, but I do have this. So I think the workspace symbol with selected node would find it in any of the files that you have open in your Explorer. Uh, let's see if that actually works. Okay, so that's only finding the current file because I don't have a workspace. But now if I, let's say, let's put it down here. Draw IO, link workspace, link symbol with selected node, right? So now if I do, in this case, there are none. I need to open something that actually has symbols. So these are the symbols over here and it didn't find any. Let's open up our BM file, our module file. And let's try this again. So I'm going to go to move here. Oh, I got to unlock it, guys. Let me select everything and unlock. Select all. Unlock. Okay, now, <laughs> maybe that's why it couldn't find it. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to select that here, and I'm going to choose, let's say, B-Box Render. And I'm going to go down to here. Okay, so now I'm going to do Control-Shift-P, Link Symbol with Selected Node. Now here, you can see I've chosen it already. I've selected the text, but if I don't select anything and I do that, it's going to let me pick from the list, which is going to be the same thing over here. So let's just find render, actually moving, set moving, right? Here it is. So now once I lock everything again, and there might be a way to just globally lock and unlock. I didn't look. File. This is a pretty comprehensive program. It's quite nice. Uh, so I've clicked on the background. Is there a way that I can just lock everything? It doesn't look like it. That's okay. So I'm just gonna right click and I'm gonna choose lock. And now if I double click, it's gonna go to my set moving. If I choose selected here, it's gonna go to my other file. So it works across files here, as long as it's within the Explorer, I think. Let's test this theory. Let's go ahead and close the whole folder. And let's save that, yeah, that's fine. I want to close the folder because I only want to open the file and see what happens. So I'm going to go to my, as soon as it gives me a moment here, my Git directory, my image to ants directory here. And then I'm going to choose resources, notes, the sky. Now I don't have anything open. So let's see what happens. Double click. Oh, that's so cool. It works even without the file in the Explorer because it's relative pathing. Let's test that here. Yes, guys, this is so rad. I don't know, I just think it's amazing. I think that it's really gonna help me become better at uh, solving hard problems in code because you can see they can get kind of complicated. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, feel free to subscribe, click the like to like it, as you know you will, and uh, click the bell for updates. I will talk to you later.